Hello everyone. Today I was just doing a little bit of napkin decoupage and this is a lovely napkin that I won in a giveaway um, from Pam and I'll put a link to her channel in the description box below. And I've just sort of decoupaged it on some of the scrap pieces of my paper and it's a beautiful napkin but when I'm looking at the covers of my journals they're a bit more subdued than the brightness in the napkin. I want to use the napkin but I also want to keep it quite soft and subdued but what I thought I could do was the actual tissue paper piece that came off the napkin you know when you separate the napkin it has three layers like that and these are both usable we can use those quite easily in our crafting and what I thought I might do is actually decoupage those over the top and see how that looks. Um, I will still be able to see the image but it will be softer and to give you an idea I just I tried a little bit in this corner here where the logo is for the napkin. Now that should be the same colour as this. Can you see the difference? It's much softer. So I'm going to try it. And then I can I'm going to make some something for the journals out of this. So first I've got some it's it's actually a clear gesso that I use for my decoupage. It's non shiny. It's like a clear matte finish which I like and this is homemade and so I'm just going to put that over the top and I'm going to try and stay in shot I did film something yesterday but then when I played it back I was oh, I was just out of shot most of the time and I I really I didn't realize it so we'll try to do it a little bit better today no perhaps show you what I made in that video that I, I can't put up um, after I've done this. So there we go, a nice coat of that and then I'm going to get the clear piece and I'm going to just line it up there. And I don't mind a few wrinkles. <laughs> So you do it the best way you can do it. Like that, get those here. And I just put another coat over the top very carefully because I don't want to be ripping the napkin. So it just gets the air bubbles out a little bit because it's white. You can see where the air bubbles might be. You can let that dry naturally or you can put your heat gun on that. This shouldn't take long to dry honestly because it's it's still got warmth in the air here so um, but what I will do is just lift it off that backing paper. I really should have a plastic sheet under here but I haven't. So just so it doesn't stick. Not that it really matters because um, I'm going to be cutting it up anyway, but just so it doesn't stick too much. Ooh, almost, almost dropped it. Okay, there we go. So, interesting to see what that looks like when it dries. And I do like that. That looks like it won't look exactly like that, I don't think. But do you see how that will blend in much better with the journals I'm making? It won't be too bright. Okay, so that's fairly dry. So just move that paper out of the way for a moment. Um, I'm just going to trim that particular that bit off the edge there. It still needs drying a little bit actually, I can feel it. 
let's just get that excess off though keep that for something else I did try it on a scrap as well and it, and it kind of feels like wallpaper and I thought well I can use that for something in the journal so they need to dry just a little bit more but I do like the look of it I think that will go with the covers much better it's just not quite so bright but I can still see the lovely images so what I made yesterday was just some simple envelopes out of um, book pages you know with the large images I kind of used like the images from the same book as the ones on the covers of the book so they should go in and they um, they're not as bright see so they will go nicely and they're very simple to make I think they just tuck in I've got a little circle at the back there so that they just tuck in there um, I've made one for each of the journals and one for the the one the wildlife one I was also playing around making some little seed packets I went on Pinterest to see um, how to make some seed packets and that was these were fun to make so there's three different types there that I made I like this one a lot just because it's a little bit different this one's very very simple to make See that you just get a square of paper get my thumb in you just have a square of paper it can be any size you want fold it in half like that to a triangle let's just flip it over so there we've got our triangle bring the top point down to the center down here and then rather than folding right at the end come in about half an inch or a centimeter and you fold it over and then this one gets folded over as well and it goes inside that one there so you have a nice little storage pouch to put some seeds in but nice for journals too just something a little bit different so that's how that one works and this one here is very simple as well can find there it is okay and these are just ripped out of an exercise book a child's school exercise book this one is just there's the sheet of paper like that and I folded it into thirds like that I have just folded up wherever it took my fancy I didn't measure or anything like that and then you can fold it down like that and you can insert that into there now if you like but I find it's a bit easier if you put a point at the top and then that goes into there like that and that's another little seed packet you can put your seeds in the back here in this pocket here to store them and write the information on the front or on the back you can even put some seeds in there as well if you like I don't think you'd want too many seeds in an envelope though so but plenty of room to write information of course these can be decorated but like I said I was just playing around and then this one this one's nice um okay so once this one is not a square this is just the full page like that okay see how that's exactly the same as that like that and all you do with this one is take one corner and fold it down so it matches the edge of that there and then with this you fold that to match the edge of the side of the triangle there and then you fold it again like that 
Okay. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it from there because there's too many creases and it's distracting me. Let me show you. I'll so we have our piece of paper from our exercise book. I'm going to take one corner and put it, meeting it over to form a point here, matching that side like that. Okay. And then this part here is a little bit wider, so I'm actually going to cut that in half like that. We don't need it that wide. Fold that over, form a nice crease, but then open it back up again. So it's like that. So you've got a nice crease on it, but open it up. Then this square edge here has to come over here. You want a nice crease going down the center. So if you line your bottom edge and your side edge up there, it should form uh, the right shape there. Okay, like that. Okay, so there's the square edge on top now. You're going to fold it over like that. So you've got the square edge underneath and you're going to fold this part up where you folded that crease before like that. Okay, there's the square edge there. We're going to flip it over again like that and we're going to fold the side sections up um, I've worked it out whatever width this is you want to come in about the same width there where you're folding. So probably, I think, no, that doesn't make sense. About there. I think, I don't think I can give measurements for that simply because every piece of paper will be a different size. Um, so it's like there's the center. I've just folded over so the tips don't quite come to the edge. Do you see that? It, just a little ed gap there and a little gap there. And then the, this one gets tucked under the square piece here. And that sits inside like that. Of course it's probably a good idea to get all those creases nice and flat and there. And that's a little seed packet. You've got a little um, edge part there. That's all tucked in but your seeds actually are stored inside here, in there. It's just a fun little thing. This one is a little bit more fiddly than the other two, but still nice. I think if you made a few, you'd perfect it to your own liking, and you could make that nice and decorative. But that was a fun thing I was playing around with anyway. That took a bit longer than I expected. Another thing, I made some little flowers with glitter in them, and I like doing that out of book pages. They are doubled over. That's something I always like to do. I've just punched out some circles and inked around them. Um, I thought they'd be nice just to put on plain pages, you know, to add like a interest point where you might want to write something important or something or something like that. I found some fabrics that might go nice. This is a lovely, it's almost a sage colour cotton fabric. And I also found some green tulle. Did I? I thought I had green tulle here. Uh, 
I... It's buried. It's buried. Um, <laughs> I don't know where it went. I do, honest. But I did find this other chiffon fabric as well, which is a really pretty colour. I don't know where the green tool went. That oh, I will find it because I like. Oh, is that no? That's my scraps. Oh goodness, that's the thing. I'm all. I've got too much, too much stuff here now. I got some yarn that I tea dyed as well to use in my book, and this is what I want to make with the decoupage paper here. You see this? I want to make some tabs with it. Um, I really should be leaving that to dry perhaps a little bit longer. Uh, that's probably the right width. What's that? An inch and uh, almost an inch and a half wide. Okay, so that would be fine if I cut that down there like that. That other one for something else. I can fold this in half. It feels really nice. It does feel like wallpaper actually. And once that's dry, I will come back and make some nice little tabs. And the easiest way, I don't think that's wide enough. The easiest way to make the tabs, because I don't have a tab punch or anything, um, I'd like one, but I don't have one. So I found, where did I put it? It's here somewhere. Oh, goodness me. I don't like being in a chaotic, and here it is. <laughs> um, I have this punch, it's got a corner punch on one side and a notch punch. People that have an envelope punch board will have the notch punch on their envelope punch board. All I do is take the edge and put it in there, pretty much like how you make your file folders. I started off like that and then I decide where I'm going to line it up here and keep a visual how that just the other side of the curve is where I've placed it. Oh, I hope that worked. Yes, it did. And then do the same again. Get that same visual of where that is. And I don't know if this is the right paper to be using as a... It's like... Oh, I've got it stuck, haven't I? Just a minute. There we go. It's only it's not very thick paper. See that? That didn't that's a terrible example. <laughs> the paper is just not thick enough. But you see what I mean? That's what I'm going to be doing with the thicker paper. It gives you this and what you do is you do it all the way along. like that. There we go, there's a good example. And then you you cut them off and there's your tabs for your page edges. So you can use those on the edge of your page in your journal. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing with this. And I was prompted to do this because I saw a lady's video come up in my feed and she was actually decorating tabs. They were printable tabs. 
Um, and I thought, oh, it just got me thinking, you know, it prompted me to start thinking, gee, I'd like a tab punch or something like that. And then I thought of this because I've used it to make file folder tops before. And so I thought that might work to make little tabs that I've just, there, little tabs, because that's the same sort of shape as the tabs she was making or decorating. So I'm going to be doing that with that and then I'll show you what they look like once that's dry. Okay, so I've just punched that one out and that punched quite nicely. Just going to trim the end off there um, and then as I want to use them I just cut them in the middle of that notch and there we have a nice little tab. I can trim that up, you don't have to, you could leave that shabby and that will be, oh there we go, here's one. I can put that on one of my pages like that put it there and you can make them as long as you want just um, put the notches further apart you could have it that way you could sew that on you could glue that on you could staple that on it just it gives a nice little you know it's it's a nice little touch, very easy to make, great way to use up all the scraps that you have. And you can just leave them like that until you're ready to use them. That way they don't, you know, get everywhere and make more mess on your desk. So I hope you found this a useful video today. I don't think there's anything new here. That's probably been done before. I haven't seen it. But it could have been. You know, most things have been done at some stage before, haven't they? So I shall be putting my little flowers away before they get crushed. And I've got... I've sort of got all my little bits in here at the moment. Um, I might start another one. here we go we'll put this is a smaller one I'll put the little flowers in there like that and I have a tutorial on these little ephemera folders then I can put my little tabs in another one and I can still use that if I want to so I'll put that in there as well and I can put my all my circles that I punched out in another one here. Just keeps them all together. They're just all those bits there. Um, if I wanted to with this, I would just find a spot where it would be getting cut and fold it like that. And I could put that in there as well with those but I'm going to be cutting those I think but you know if you don't have small folders you can put that in a file folder or something but they all fit it keeps everything together until I'm ready to start decorating my book okay take care everybody I hope you're all keeping well I do appreciate um, the comments I'm not I haven't I'm not up to date on my comments for years and years and years I have been up to date on comments but I'm not up to date and I do apologise for that but I do read them, I do read them as I come through. I should just put a love heart on them but I do, I have the best of intentions of going back and comment, answering them. I try to as often as I can so yes I do read them though so <laughs> that's a good thing. I tried cutting one of these out of a scrap and it was a bit bright so um, that's what got me to thinking also about using the decoupage, the white paper that most people would throw away, how it, you know, it just softens everything. I really like the way that turned out. Really nice. It does need to dry a bit more though. Okay, have a wonderful day everybody and I hope I see you again tomorrow. Bye.